Hello everyone, Tiberius here, bringing you a new video on Star Trek Fleet Command. This is part of a updated new player tutorial series that I wanted to do. Um, you know, I, I, it's coming up on my two year anniversary playing the game here, and a lot of things since then have changed. I started doing videos maybe about a year into the game uh, when I was in my mid 20s, uh, but I wanted to go back, do some more videos uh, for because the, the path through the game has certainly changed as new features and uh, new ships and strategies and officers and things have come out. So I wanted to go back to the beginning and kind of do uh, things from scratch. Uh, I do want to pull this up real quick before we get started. Sorry. Uh, if you want to look at any of those previous videos I've done, you can find me right here on YouTube, Tiberius2187. I recommend going to the playlists and going to my Star Trek Fleet Command basics. You can look at the view, the full playlist right here. Here are a lot of different basic videos that I did explaining different missions, different crew and officer synergy, how finding a good alliance, how to do different mining things, how to do uh, the combat triangle is probably one of the biggest uh, things in the game for, for newer players learning about it. Um, so there's a, a lot of good introductory things here that I've already done, and most of this content should be st still be pretty accurate. But I am going to go through and do uh, some new videos. Uh, we're going to start today with Ops Levels 1 through 10, and then I'll probably break it down into five level groupings going forward after that. Uh, the first 10 levels are, are pretty pretty similar, uh, all pretty compact, there's not a lot going on, you kind of move through the first five pretty quickly. Uh, and then after that, you know, it, there's different little sort of segments and stages in the game that are kind of tiered every every five levels or so. Uh, but you can find all these previous videos on my YouTube channel. I also do live streaming a couple nights a week on Twitch. Uh, again, just look for Tiberius2187 on Twitch and you can find that. Feel free to stop by anytime, ask all your questions live in the chat hang out and just lurk and watch what's going on. So let me bring up my my new account here. This is a I'm currently ops level 11. This is a new account that I just started a few days ago. Um, it's actually on a brand new server, server 83, uh, which was just created I think April 1st. Because um, I mean there are very there are no there, there are very low level players on this server. So kind of a brand new game, brand new experience and I thought it was a good opportunity uh, to be on this server here to show everybody kind of the basic mechanics of the game. So at Ops level 1, when you first create your account, it's going to put you in one of these little low-level systems out here. Uh, there's a variety of them. There's dozens of them. It'll put you in a little one uh, level 1 system. It'll give you a mission or two to do. Then it'll move you to the level two system and say, you know, do some other stuff. The first five levels are really a tutorial. The game is kind of telling you what to do next. It's showing you all the different features, how to mine, how to attack other ships, how to upgrade your base, how to move your base, uh, those kinds of things, how to join an alliance. Uh, and then it's going to kind of start to branch out a little bit, how to build a ship, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and then once you get to about ops level five, it's going to start to branch you out a little bit. And you'll start moving out into some of these other systems, you know, the five level systems, the level seven strength systems, uh, some of these other, you know, station hubs here as well. Uh, do want to also point out this little toggle over here. This changes the system names to the resources that they mine. So if you know the little icons for the resources, you can see what's available. Par steel, tritanium, and then the different types of resources like ore and... Uh, gas or crystal, dilithium, those types of things as you move through it. Uh, it's a handy little toggle if you're looking for a specific resource. Don't forget about that one as well. All right, so we've got a couple little quick tips for you that should help you move through the game quickly and efficiently. Uh, number one is get missions. Um, when you start in the lower level systems and they start to branch you out, uh, once you get out of this little hub here, or whatever little hub you're in, and they start to branch you out into the level 5s and the level 7 systems, there's going to be a lot of missions available in those systems. Just pick them all up. Even if you can't do them all yet, just 
just keep adding them, just keep picking them all up, um, and putting them in your mission tab. If it's something that's really way above your level, you can always hit this little button here that will archive it. That I'll just put it in the archives, Let's save it for later. That way you don't have to go back to the system or remember that you have to go back to the system to pick the mission up. Uh, and then if you want to unarchive it, you just highlight the mission and hit the unarchive button and it'll move it out. And then you can see what you have to do. And like this one's, okay, I have to defeat that guy's explorer. I can go target it and see, okay, uh, this ship is 18,000 strength. My ship is only 6,000 strength. Okay, not going to be able to do that one for a little while. So I'll come back here and I'm going to re-archive that one. Not ready to do that yet. But the reason I say that to pick up all your missions when you can um, is because a number of missions, especially in the early stages of the game, overlap. And what I mean by that is, like, say, this particular mission here is mining. It wants me to mine 2,000 dilithium. There are, as I was moving through it, I think I counted three missions that you can get all around, like, Ops 4, 5, 6, um, that want you to mine 500 Tritanium. So why do that three separate times? Pick up the three missions, go mine 500 Tritanium. It will count for each of those missions, and then you only have to do the mining part once. You know, mining is not a very quick activity, especially with your, your very first mining ship that you get. So uh, make your life easier, only have to do it once. Also the same thing with a number of hostile missions. A number of missions that you will pick up in systems will say, kill five things of level six. And then maybe there's another one that says, kill five things of level seven or higher. Because um, that's usually how they're worded. Usually how they're worded uh, is to kill X level or higher. I don't think I have any right now. Yeah. Um, but usually this, like this one right here, is, you know, is combat training 15. I, my, had, my goal for this one was to kill five things level 15 or higher. Once I did that, now it's going to put me against the boss. Uh, again, pick up all, you know, just keep picking up missions because a lot of them will overlap. And if one of them says kill things level six or higher, and one of them says kill things level seven or higher, if you just kill things that are level seven, it will count for both. If you kill things that are level six, it only counts for one of them. So again, you can make your life easier by doing multiple missions at the same time. Uh, it'll help you get the rewards faster. It'll help you move through the game quicker. That's tip number one. Tip number two, joining an alliance. I do have a separate video all about the perks and benefits of joining a good alliance, but here I'll just recap a few things for you. Oh, looks like we got a building ready. This is a good way to uh, exemplify that. So when you pick a building, that you want to upgrade. I will, what am I looking to upgrade here? These are all level 11 already, good. Here, let's do my, let's do my shuttle bay. It takes two and a half hours to upgrade. I click that purple button here to ask for help. Depending on the level of your alliance, you, that will determine the number of helps that you can get. Each help given by another player of your alliance, if they happen to be online and they hit the little help button that pops up, will take one minute or one percent off of the, the completion time, whichever is greater. Anything that costs under two hours is basically going to be one minute. Once you have something that's over two hours, then you start getting into uh, the one percent being the greater there. So it'll make take a minute and a half or two minutes off your time. In the beginning of the game, you do not have very many ways to speed up your buildings, your researches, your ship repairs, your ship upgrades. So getting any little helps you can get to help shave that time down is a, is a big difference. Uh, and the easiest way to figure out to do that is if you go into, it won't let me do it because I'm in an alliance right now probably. Let's see if I can do it. No, I don't want to leave my alliance. I like my alliance. Uh, okay, but we can look at it this way. So if I were a new player on this server and I was going to try and join an alliance, the first thing I'd want to look for are, is the alliance level and see where it's at. Uh, the higher the level of the alliance, the more helps that you're allowed to give out. So while 
this alliance right here of level 6 looks like it has a lot of players in it, 36 out of 40. Um, you might only be able to get 4 or 5 helps, so you're only shaving 4 or 5 minutes off each thing as compared to this alliance right up here that's level 10. has about the same number of players in it, 34, but it's level 10, so if I can get 8 or 10 helps, then I'm shaving 8 to 10 minutes or whatever off of all of my buildings. It will add up. Uh, and remember, when you get within five minutes, you can finish, if you're online, you can finish the event or the building or whatever you're doing. Uh, if it's within those final five, if it has five minutes or less, you can just complete it and speed it up yourself. So in a lot of your buildings, in the first couple levels, take 15 to 20 minutes to upgrade. If you have active players and you can get 10 helps, now you're getting it much closer to that five minute window. You can speed it up the rest of the way and then move on to your next building. It will really help you uh, with your upgrades and move through things quicker without having to use speed ups to do it. It does require you to have active players online. Like I just started this building. I've already gotten two out of my 13 helps and it took a couple minutes off of that timer. That's item number two. We'll talk about officer crews real quick. In the beginning of the game, you have very few officers. They start you with a couple of the next generation officers now, which were not available back then. The next generation officers and the, uh, these are the Kelvin timeline cadets, Kirk, who are based on the, the reboot movies, uh, mirror each other pretty similarly. There is no version of Scotty, uh, in, the, in the, the next generation group, but uh, like if you look at Cadet Uhura's captain's ability, decreases weapon damage of the opponent's ship by 10%. If you look at LaForge, decreases opponent's weapon damage. I think LaForge is on one of my ships right now, so that's why his ability is showing higher. Yeah, he's the captain here, so if I let's just do this for a minute. Let's just take everybody off so we can see that real quick. So you'll see his captain's ability is the same. Same captain's ability for him. So whichever one, depending on how you open your first few recruit packs, one of your crews, whether it's the next generation crew or the cadet crew, may level up a little faster. Uh, and if that's the case, that's just the more of the, uh, of the one you want to focus on. They're pretty interchangeable for the most part. Uh, typically, you're going to want LaForge or Uhura as your captain because their ability reduces the damage the opponent's doing to you. And then as your side officer, you're going to want either Crusher or McCoy because their officer ability here, their second ability when they're not captain, this is the captain's ability, this is the officer's ability. The second ability here during combat increases the effectiveness of the captain's maneuver by X percent. I think it starts at 4% and as you tier them up this increases uh, each different officer tier. So now it's up to 6% and then I think it goes to 8% and I think the final tier is 10% uh, that you can promote her as you get more and more officer shards and you can promote the officers to higher levels. And depending on which officer shards you get be who you can promote sooner, which will kind of dictate which crew you use. Uh, my McCoy did not get very many. He's still at 4%, so therefore I'm using the next generation crew instead. So LaForge is reducing the damage by 10%. Crusher's ability increases the effectiveness of that by another 6, so I'm taking 16% less damage. The other thing with officers is when you have officers of the same group together, they give you an ability, they give you a synergy bonus. When you put an officer on a ship, you'll see this little icon here, synergy. So now it's adding, she is adding 5% to his captain's ability. So now his captain's ability, when I confirm this, will show that he's decreasing the weapon damage by 15%. That's not counting the 6% that she gives you from her ability as well. So now we just went to, well, it's basically still 21, 21 and a half. Uh, 
because you're at 15 percent she's adding another six to that so yeah so now you're up to 21 and change whatever it comes out to be of a reduction for your third officer you can also do this like I could put Riker here and I'm gonna get another 5% bonus the reason I'm getting bigger bonuses here than you might be seeing is based on having the different types of officers the command officers the engineers the science officers if I put Troy up there well that bonus is only 2% because I already have somebody with that same type so you get bigger benefits for diversifying your officer types so now his benefit would be up to 20% of which she's gonna add 6% more there are two other officers that you will get very early on one is Talon the other one is Chen when you are fighting hostiles which are the red dots red ships floating around on your screen these guys the red ones let's minimize this yeah. so when you're fighting the red ones and they're floating around on your screen those are hostiles the, the, the very basic hostile crew is LaForge and and Crusher or Uhura and Bones and then either Talon or Chen Talon's officer ability she decreases the damage done by its kinetic weapons by X percent and again as she scales up this number changes she starts at five percent and then she goes up all the way up to 20 percent when you have her fully maxed she works against any hostiles level 51 and under so she's an officer you're going to use for a very long time most of these other officers you're going to outgrow fairly quickly as you replace them Talon and Chen are not that case you will use them for almost the rest of the game currently newer servers only usually go up to ops 40 or 39 for about the first year and then after that they start unlocking it and you can go up to maybe ops 50 and then after another year or so they'll unlock it and, you can, and then they'll give you the ability to go even further uh, no server can go beyond ops 60 right now that's currently the stopping point so these these officers do have incredible value and you will use these two for a very long time, Talon and Chen. Uh, Chen does the same thing as Talon. If it's a hostile, the red targets, she decreases the damage done by its energy weapons. Hers is 10%. Hers is a little bit of a bigger bonus. Hers goes all the way up to 30% when she's fully maxed out. It makes a huge difference in the amount of damage that you take. allows you to kill more things, allows you to kill bigger things uh, throughout the game. They are a great officer to put in this third slot. So now your captain's ability, reducing the damage by 15%. Officer ability is boosting that another six. And now you're also reducing the damage of their weapons by 7%. Two different types of weapons here based on two different types of ships. For the most part, interceptor type ships have kinetic weapons. The other types of ships have energy weapons. So if I were going to go fight these guys here, these are explorer types based on the icon. You can see it here, the different types of icons. Explorer, interceptor, battleships, survey ships. If I were fighting interceptors, I would want to use Talon. She's going to reduce their weapons. If I were fighting battleships, explorers, or survey ships, I would want to use Chen. She's going to affect their class of weapons that they use. Chen clearly has more value than Talon. Uh, especially because she also has a bigger modifier she's also harder to get shards for and you'll need more shards to level her up throughout the game now those are for targeting the red targets Talon and Chen's abilities do not work on these gold targets these are mission boss mission objective targets her ability their hurt well her because it's both of them they're both hers uh, does not affect them whatsoever so if you were going after a mission boss you'd want to swap it out and I would want to use I'd want to put Riker in here 
you know, giving myself a bigger synergy bonus on my captain's ability because the captain's abilities for these guys do still work and do the damage reduction on the mission bosses. And that will give you the bigger benefit there, making you, making you able to punch up a little bit more, hit targets that are a little bigger than you uh, because you are reducing their damage by so much. You know, you're talking about a 20% reduction plus Beverly adding another six. So now they're hitting you for, you know, a quarter of what they normally, or a quarter less than they normally should be. Swap that back. Important distinction to note between the red targets and the gold mission bosses. That'll help you m kill things more quickly and move through and advance the game a little bit for you. Speaking of officer recruits, that's going to move on to my next topic, which is item number four here. When you first get started, and as you start doing certain missions, they're going to give you, as a reward, we'll look at those first, as mission rewards, sometimes you will get little officer shards. Most of them are going to be for common officers. Occasionally, you might get some mission rewards for green. Those are uncommon officers. Uh, and then as you progress, you'll start getting better mission rewards for rare or possibly even epic officers. Uh, let's look at my archives. I know I've got one or two, like rare officer blue, like Harrison here. Uh, this one right here, this is a, an uncommon officer, officer 7, 8, and 1. And then eventually you'll get to missions that give you epic officers, like Jayla. You still need lots of shards to unlock these officers. It will take you a while to build up to the point where you can unlock them. You can see your progress in your officer tab here and how close you are to being able to leveling them up to the next level. I currently have three out of the 15 shards I need to advance her to her next tier. This particular guy, I had I only needed 10. I currently have 12, so I could promote him. He's, he's on an away team mission right now, so I can't do it. I'm also saving it for an event which is what we're also going to talk about. And then down here you can see the officers that you haven't unlocked yet that are all locked. They're grayed out and it will tell you how many more shards you need before you can unlock them. When you first start recruiting officers, you're mostly from missions going to get these standard recruits. You can see the officers that are available in these particular packs. Right now it's a lot of common officers. It does include a couple of uncommon officers like Chen, uh, as well as a couple of rare officers who are good for mining. These are different miners who add bo uh, boosts to your mining rates. The impulse is going to be when you first start getting these shards to try and just, let me just keep opening these packs right away, uh, to try and see who I get so I can get more officers, so I can do more things, so I can play with. You don't really need to do that. Uh, save these for when there's an actual event that requires you to get officer shards. Your officer, your ability to get officer shards is very limited in the game. And one of the things that they will do, you know, every six hours or so, you have these daily events. Yeah, we have a 12 hour event, we have a six hour event. The one that would happen to be this morning was an officer recruit event, which said, you know, gain officer shards to get these points and for getting these points you get these rewards this is a pretty good amount this is 33,000 tritanium uh, as well as a little bit of ship xp and some ship parts the tritanium is a pretty good resource to have 33,000 is a pretty big number and some of the other uh, events see if i can go back no can't go back any further uh, do pay out better rewards the heroic version does require you to have more officer shards and more points to complete it, but the rewards are better. All that was to say, stfc.ovh is a current website that you can look at that you can see all of your different event dailies. We are currently right here, April 7th. It says day nine because there is a pattern to the event cycle. Every 11 days, the pattern starts over. So you can go here and you can look up 
all of the different missions and see what your missions are for today and what's coming up for the next couple of days. So I could look and see this morning, hey, you know, or last night when I was getting all these recruit tokens, hey, there's an officer recruit event tomorrow. Don't do it. Um, if you're trying to figure out how to read this calendar, this server starts here. This starts at server reset, which for me, Eastern Standard Time is midnight. It may be different in your time zone uh, based on where you are in relation to Scopely servers and which servers, uh, whether you're on a European server or a Asia Pacific server. So this is the events that started at midnight. You have your six hour events up top. You have your 12 hour events on the bottom. Six hour event, six hour event, six hour, six hour. This is a 12 hour, this is a 12 hour. The reason I also say to go here, not only just to plan out when to use things, is it also helps you see when certain events may overlap, which is another big key takeaway. Currently, right now, we are here, 12 noon to 6 p.m. That's why this one is highlighted. This is the Officer XP event, and this is the 12-hour research event. This one will go from noon to midnight. At 6 p.m., this event ends, and this one starts. These are both research events. So I don't want to go crazy doing research events to complete this in the first half. I want to wait until 6 o'clock when this event also starts, and then my researches will double up and count for both. More efficient, more effective way to do things and get the rewards because you're, the amount of researches you can do and the ability you have to speed up those researches is very limited in the early part of the game. So you want to get the, the biggest bang for your buck. You look at some of these events tomorrow. These don't overlap. This one doesn't overlap, but this one does. Here's a station event. This SLB stands for Solo Leaderboard. Those are where you're competing against other players. So the more points you get, you're going to get ranked, and the better the rewards are for whatever your rank, however high you finish. Uh, so again, being able to complete multiple things, possibly in this window, and you can't do that if you spent all your you know, speed ups or completed all your buildings in the earlier part of the day. So tomorrow I'll do the same thing. I'll wait until the evening time and do both. And again here, the, none of these overlap. These don't overlap. Occasionally they do. Oh, this is another one that overlaps here as well. So stfc.ovh is the website. I recommend checking it every day, kind of planning out your day for your events and what's going on there. As long as we're talking about websites, stfc.space is another brilliant one to use. This is a full database, has all the ships, all the different systems, the buildings, the research, all the officers, the some events and missions and stuff. Uh, if you ever get stuck and you see a mission that says like you must complete this other mission first in order to, to get it, you could go here, look up that other mission, it will tell you where to find it. Uh, the Art of Misdirection, I need to find that one for some reason. It will tell you the chain and the path of what else you have to complete before it. And you can also look at the top here and it will tell you what you have to do to complete it. And somewhere in here, sometimes it says what comes after it. And if I can't see where to pick it up and where to start it, then maybe I need to go back to the previous one and kind of look and go backwards. Optimizing your rewards for daily events will definitely improve your standing. So this is, this is a solo leaderboard event. It doesn't have a points milestone, it has a ranking. And as you can see, the different ranks pay out different rewards. So if you plan properly and plan ahead, you can cash in multiple things, get higher point totals, and finish up in the higher brackets and get better rewards for it. We talked about recruits, we talked about officer crews, PvP, not something you have to worry about in levels zero through or one through nine. Uh, other players cannot attack your ships until you reach ops level ten. 
at ops level 10, other players can attack your ships. However, those players must be within two levels of you. Uh, that gap widens once you get into the 20s, uh, and then it starts being like you know three or four levels, and then five or then six levels, and it kind of widens out. We'll cover that in more detail in future videos, but just know that uh, zero or WAPs one through nine, nobody can hit you. At ops 10, the only players who can attack your ships uh, are levels 10 through 12. Your base cannot be targeted until you reach ops level 15. So this way you don't have to worry about shields or anything like that to protect your resources. And again, we'll cover that in the future video. The last thing I want to talk about is the importance of reaching Ops 10 uh, as quickly as possible because Ops 10 is a very big milestone point in the game. Not only does it sort of get you out of the introductory stuff and get you to the next rung of ships, as we look at shipyard level, you start off, they give you the Rialta and then you kind of start with the Orion Corvette and the ECS Fortunate here. These are the other tier one level ships. When you get to Ops level 10, you can start doing the research and get your ship shipyard upgraded so you can build the Findra. This is the first of the two star ships and it has significantly more strength than the level one ships. This will let you kill some bigger hostiles and things and kind of begin to advance your game. And then from there you'll move on the Turos at level 12, the Tala at 14, etc. The Jellyfish is a rare ship. Usually you have to buy it when you get to, you know, a higher level, 12 or, or above. Uh, it may become available in the store, but if you're like me, I'm trying to do this account completely free to play and not spend any money at all on it, not, not getting the research queue, the second builder, or any of these other ship packs and things like that. Prime resource regeneration is a waste. Don't buy it. I'll just tell you that right now. There's no point in spending money on that. You might ask why. We'll go ahead and, and, and figure that out for you here in just a second. So prime resource regeneration, which is the one they want to sell you for five bucks, makes these generators generate resources faster. After the first couple of levels, you will probably, from mission rewards and things, pretty quickly get to the point where you're above your warehouse capacity. Or if they do a gift chest or something like that, or you get rewards from the battle pass, which we'll cover in just a second, you will get large amounts of resources, more than you can normally hold. If you're above your level of what you can hold, your generators turn off and they stop producing stuff. So until I spend, you know, I'm currently at 3.8 million out of my 44,000 capacity. So until I spend, you know, nearly all of this, basically I have to spend over 3.8 million to get this below the 44,000 threshold, my par steel generators are not gonna give me any more par steel. So who cares how fast they're going if they're not actually doing anything? Uh, and for a good portion of the game, your generators will, will be off. They will not be doing anything that will impact your game. So spending money to get a prime research that makes them go faster, not a good investment. Prime damage you can get with just basic resources. It doesn't require anything special. So complete that one when you have the dilithium, which you should get from an event reward uh, to complete that. This one gives you 100% more damage, base weapon damage to your ships. The prime hulls and prime shields, these require three-star resources to complete. Three-star resources are what you start getting when you get near level 20. Again, you can probably get through the game without spending whatever they charge you for these. Probably not cheap. It's probably 50 or 100 bucks to buy them. Um, save that money. You'll get these resources when you get closer to level 20, and you can get them yourself and get the extra bonus there without spending for it. Uh, this is the prime resource one base generation resource speed. I could, oh, I don't need to buy this. This is also, again, a base resource. It's just dilithium, but it's not really an urgent thing to do. Now, I will say that the primes do give you a good number of 
points towards events. So if you uh, are coming up and you do have a solo leaderboard event, that might not might not be a bad time to complete this. I might complete this tonight just to get the points towards the leaderboard to get the better uh, rewards. But I certainly wouldn't spend money uh, to get this. I would have to just use the resources that I already have. And some of these are also locked because you're not a high enough level yet. You don't have the requirements. Also, the way the game does, they do a lot of things that are level locked. They do a lot of things that, you know, require certain building to be X level completed or something like that before you get the next level of research. Uh, a lot of times they will make things balanced, uh, whereas you can't just upgrade one particular thing just all the way as high as you can go. Um, it will have a requirement, like if I wanted to upgrade, if I wanted to upgrade this generator, it's grayed out, I can't do it because I have to upgrade something else first. The game does that a lot as you progress. It tells you, you know, you'll get a little flexibility, but then it'll be like, okay, now we need to bring everything else back up to balance it out. Whether it's, you know, I want to complete this building and it's, it tells me, hey, you, you need to upgrade this generator or your ship dock or something else first. And you're like, well, I didn't need that for a little while and maybe that's fallen behind. Maybe that's only level two. Uh, and now I have to upgrade it multiple levels for it to catch up so that I can do the thing that I really want to do. That is a mechanic in the game. Some people like it. Some people don't like it because they feel like they should just be able to do level up whatever they want. But that is how the game works. So keep that in mind that you will have to. Level 10 is a good point to sort of catch your breath before pushing on even further. Uh, work on your ship upgrade, get all your other buildings sort of caught up before moving on further. Uh, once you reach ops level 12, uh, until ops level 12, you have the ability to change servers if you want. Uh, when you move to 13, you can't change servers anymore. If you wanted to do that, you would do that right here. You go into your settings. There's this universe right here. It tells you what server you're on. And if you wanted to bring up and transfer to another server, you could do that right in here. If you have friends playing on another server, uh, you could just find one that's marked as available, hit the button, transfer over. Uh, I'm in the US, so I have all the US servers. Doesn't, oh, it's just drop down right here. I can change it to EU if I wanted to transfer to an EU server. Uh, or if I wanted to transfer to an APAC server, I could do that as well. Haven't decided what I'm going to do with this account just yet, so uh, I will probably sit at 12 for a little bit. Uh, it's also good, gives you a chance to sort of get some resources going to help upgrade your ships. Catch up on all your buildings, catch up on some research and things like that. 10 is a good sort of camping point. The other reason I do say that it's important to get to Ops level 10, this is the final pin, I talked about it already, is the Battle Pass. Every month there is a three week long event called the Battle Pass that takes place in the game. There's a specific theme to it. Currently this month it is Lower Decks. This is month number one of Lower Decks. Some events have multiple arcs to them, multiple months to the overall arc. Uh, we just did a Ferengi event that was two months long. Uh, coming off that, we had an event that was focused on the Klingon-Romulan War called Duality. That was about three months long. Before that, we had the Next Generation event, where the Next Generation characters were introduced. Uh, that one was a little longer. I think that one was four or five months. When you have these overall arcs that are three months or more, at the in the final month of that, you get an event store that has a lot of different prizes and rewards in it. Uh, normally it just has a couple of missions that you'll get the mission keys for throughout the month uh, and then you'll go pick these up and go do the missions. Uh, this one right now is also giving you an opportunity to choose from a couple different avatars. Uh, there will be more coming next week so I'm holding off on picking which one I want until I see what all the other ones are. The Battle Pass is, a like I said, it's a three week long event. There are 20 different milestones throughout the Battle Pass. I don't know why Badgley here didn't load up all the way. Uh, each day you will have a 24-hour event, do something, this changes, uh, and you get these battle pass points. As you get complete these milestones, the different points unlock, the points get added to your total over here, and as you complete different totals, you move further and further along the path, getting 
the rewards progressively get better the further in you go. Like case in point, that prime I was looking at was going to cost me 13,000 dilithium. Well, here I just got 25,000 for completing today's uh, battle pass milestone. There are two tiers. The free tier is up here at the top. Everybody gets the rewards from this if you complete the milestones and get the, the battle pass points. Below it is the elite path. This is the one if you pay for it, you get these extra rewards. There are two options for the elite path. There's a $20 option, which just unlocks this, and you just, as you progress, get the rewards for each milestone. And then there's usually a $100 path, which when you buy it, not only do you get this, you get something extra in the beginning with the pack when you buy it. Usually it's part of whatever epic officer they're giving out this month. If you are a spender, you're probably going to go from the more elite path. So we look here. So the elite path gives me the elite access plus 30 of Mariner Shards. You need 120 to unlock her, so that gets you a quarter of the way there. And 15 Boimler Shards, you need 45 to unlock him, so that gets you a third of the way there. The premium reward one for $20 just unlocks the bottom path. That's all it does. So the two options there, $20, it's kind of like a monthly subscription, kind of like we'd pay for like Netflix or something like that. $100, certainly a more and in bigger investment. Uh, there are plenty of people who play this game in the free-to-play path and never worry about any of this stuff. That is certainly an option for you. Just wanted to make sure I pointed out both options. Uh, currently this month, if you look in the top half, there are no Boimler shards or Beckett shards. They are only available in the bottom half. Uh, but they will be available throughout the month during some of the events. Uh, so that would be a way to pick up some shards for them as well. But in the Elite Path, in addition to getting some up front, you also get some along the way. The Battle Pass unlocks at Ops level 10. So whenever you reach level 10, this will open. If you do it at the beginning of the arc, this event, uh, Monthly arcs start on Tuesdays, and it's usually the Tuesday of like the first full week of the month. So uh, we're in April, it's April 7th. If April 5th is when the event arc launched, because it was the first Tuesday of the first full week of the month, it'll run for you know about three weeks here, 21 days. And for completing these events, you get different points, reach different milestones. If you hit Ops level 10, April 15th, in the middle of the month, you can still complete some of these milestones. Uh, it will start for you late. You won't be able to do all the events from the first handful of days that you missed, but each event you get will still give you points, and you'll start at you know milestone 1, and you'll work your way through. Maybe you only get partway through the first month, um, you know, but there are also a couple extra days at the end of the month for the second event, which is the Heroic Battle Pass Overflow event. This event requires you to do hit all the max milestone, uh, the, the max event completion point, every day for the entire arc. So the event arc here, like I said, it goes about three weeks. By you know day 17 or day 18, you'll have accumulated enough points to reach this 20th milestone and finish the event. But there'll be three or four extra days at the end where players who maybe missed an event or maybe started late can still get some points to try and catch up. Or if you're you know an active player and you continue to play, they reward you by giving you extra points and extra rewards. And these rewards are a little bit better. You get some Latinum, you get some tokens. You get some more tokens. The third milestone here gives you a couple of these Boimler shards. The fourth one here gives you a couple more Boimler shards as well as an epic avatar that you can put into your display. You also get these broken desealing rods, which is a new feature they just added to the game, another free-to-play path. We'll talk about that in a future video because it requires the treasury, uh, which you will not have access to yet at that level. It's important to get these and stockpile these because you're going to need them at some point. Uh, so if you can get all the, the Battle Pass milestones completed, in addition to all these other rewards, you're going to want to hang on to these 
They haven't revealed, this is a new feature this month, they haven't revealed the scoring for how this is going to work yet, which is why we'll cover it in a later video as well. I know that was a lot. It went a little longer than I thought it would. Hopefully your head's not ready to explode, but I wanted to make sure I gave you sort of an in-depth analysis uh, on things that you can do to really maximize your experience for ops level 1 through 10. Uh, you want to get to 10 quickly, especially if it's in the middle of a month uh, and you have the battle pass about to start. If you're starting the game at the end of the month and you have a couple days, you can progress yourself a little, a little more slowly, a little more balanced. Just make sure that by that first Tuesday of the full week, uh, and you'll hear people talking about it, you'll see stuff about scheduled maintenance, scheduled downtime. Uh, they'll make an announcement, usually in the news channel. Yeah, they didn't put it in there. There's some release notes. What day? What did they change? Are they just letting us know? Redeeming your resource tokens has moved. Okay, so they moved some stuff around. Hmm. They're just letting everybody know. So there's the helps. So I can give people helps. So those 11 people just got a little speed up toward their buildings, whatever they're working on right now. And as we see here now, I waited a little bit. Now this one is up to 8 of 13. So 8 people in my alliance have helped me. Shaved 8 minutes, give or take, off my building time there. So that's getting me a little closer to completion. But that's going to wrap it up for Ops 1 through 10. Again, want to make sure you get to Ops level 10 so you can start participating in the battle pass because the rewards for the battle pass are significantly higher than any other rewards you will get in the game from other ways. Just by comparison real quick, your daily event, this research event we'll look at is giving you 1600 officer XP for doing the max one plus a few of these little recruit tokens. As compared to say the battle pass which, if you get to certain milestones, those are faction credits. Let's see if I can find one that gives recruit tokens. Nope. There probably isn't one. Hey, there's one and a half million tritanium, though, you know. That sure beats the 30,000 that I was getting from the uh, event that I would have completed for doing the officer recruiting yesterday. Uh, 75,000 dilithium, you know, again, bigger chunks, bigger chunks of resources in the battle pass and again as you get further and further the rewards get better so that's why you want to get to ops level 10 as quickly as you can so you can take advantage of those benefits and hopefully the tips I've given you throughout the video will help you get there uh, thank you very much for watching be sure and like and follow on both twitch uh, and YouTube and you can join my twitch streams three times a week I'm currently streaming and uh, ask all your questions live and in chat and uh, learn and, and grow and I hope you have fun but until the next time I will see you around the galaxy